Cezanne was born January 19, 1834, in Aix-en-Provence, France. He lived to be 72, dying October 22, 1906. He lived a very fulfilling, prosperous life. Cezanne's father was a co-founder of a wealthy bank firm. While his father set unattainable goals for Cezanne's life, Cezanne had his aspirations set on a life full of art. Paul Cezanne's career started when he attended a school of design in his hometown. His father, still disapproving his son's choices, encouraged Cezanne to go to law school in 1858. He went for a few years, and at this time he was juggling both law and art school. After five months in Paris, he began to doubt himself. He returned home and began working at his father's bank. He still continued his art studies. Working in his father's bank didn't go so well, so he returned to Paris where he lived for one and a half years. Paul Cezanne was not very influential to the Impressionist period. Many of his works were laughed at by critics and were rejected from the Académie des Beaux Arts. When he died, many of his works were put on display in 1907, where they gained much more recognition than before. Many young artists were inspired by his use of simplified shapes and optical effects. According to Henry Matisse, I thought, if Cezanne is right, I am right, because I knew Cezanne had made no mistake. Picasso also stated Cezanne was my one and only master. Don't you think I looked at his picture? Who influenced Paul Cezanne? One of the most influential characters in Cezanne's life was Camille Pizarro. Pizarro was a contemporary artist and a lifelong friend of Cezanne, with whom he shared many styles. However, the person who had the greatest influence in Cezanne's life was his mother, Anne Elizabeth Honorine Albert. She was described as a vivacious and romantic woman. It is said that this is where Cezanne got his conception and vision of life. Paul Cezanne was admired by many. He has been considered by Matisse and Picasso as the father of us all. Cezanne laid down the foundations of the transition from 19th century conception of artistic endeavor to a new and radically different world of art in the 20th century. Some aspects of Cezanne's art that are distinguishable is how he exaggerates his brushstrokes and how they are easily seen. As Paul Cezanne began painting, his brushstrokes were light and airy, and as he matured as an artist, they began to become more architectural. Comparisons Paul Cezanne and Camille Pissarro are very similar, mainly because they did a few collaborations. He is very different from other artists in the way he sees things. Cezanne sees the shapes in nature. As one may see a tree, Cezanne sees a cylinder. Paul Cezanne's paintings vary greatly, from light and cheery to morbid and dark. He also painted a wide variety of subjects, such as people, landscapes, fruits, skulls, and scenes with men and women looking over lakes, both parts being played by Bruce Jenner. <laughs> Cezanne varies from other artists in other countries as he paints French landscapes. You won't see Paul Cezanne paint a picture of the Golden Gate Bridge. Boom! Cezanne's painting The Bay of Marseille, seen from Les Stocks, 1886 through 90, is a typical oil canvas painting of the time. However, the manner in which it's painted is different from most other Impressionist paintings. Whereas most painters of the day would have focused more on the specifics of the environment, such as the weather or time of day, Cezanne focused more on the color and look of the city itself, equally blending many different colors and structures. Lestoc was a small fishing village, and Cezanne spent many days there as an escape from the annoyances of daily life. He grew to cherish the village, and it was here that he painted some of his greatest landscape pictures. This piece is titled Pyramid of Skulls. Much like many of Cezanne's other works, this piece was done in oil paint. It is very morbid and dark, which is symbolic for impending death. This is ironic because he died the following year. The Pont de Mancy, compared to his other works, it is very green. By the same time, you can see the difference of the bridge and pond. It is easy to see it is one of his later paintings. Being made in 1880, the brushstrokes are very heavy and visible, using oil paint. In Cezanne's painting, Turning Road at Montreal, he uses oil on canvas. He depicts a small French village of Montreal using direct observation. There is no real symbolism to this piece.